In this episode of the Azure Accenture Show, we're talking to uh, two Microsoft corporate vice presidents about Gen AI and business transformation led by radical product innovation. Please join us. Welcome, Uli. Uh, welcome, Vijay. Uh, today, we're going to discuss Gen AI and business transformation, in particular, uh, business transformation that is met by radical product innovation and R&D. Uli, I'm going to start with you. I know you have worked on multiple ways of transformation, from on-prem to the cloud, the e-commerce wave, the software as a service wave, just to name a few. So how do you see Gen AI compared to previous business transformation waves? Hey, Jacob. Hey, BJ. Thanks for being on the program. I really appreciate the invitation. Um, and obviously, this is a super interesting conversation. Um, if you look at the previous transformations, they all focused on taking something big, like a mainframe, for example, turning it into smaller things like a mini, and then turning it even smaller into a PC. So there was some core innovation that happened, and everybody's trying to mini miniaturize it. From the PC, we then then to the phone. If you look at e-commerce, it started off with the internet being the core innovation. And then we effectively built on top of this and figured out how to uh, utilize. AI is similar in a way because obviously there has been AI since a long time. Uh, AI started in the 50s, just in case, uh, 1950s, uh, just in case anybody is confused. Um, but <clears throat> Gen AI really looked at it from a different perspective and brought in something very, very special. Uh, that special is that you have now technology that effectively reasons over your suggestions or your questions and responds. In the previous ways, you still had to write code that effectively did exactly what you said it would do and did it reliably and consistently, which is obviously sometimes what you want. But with Gen AI, we are moving into a world where the AI system learns and puts that learning to use continuously and breaks it back. And that's really the big, big thing uh, that effectively changes now that we have Gen AI. The next waves will also talk about planning and other things, which are very normal human activities, but computers haven't been able to do that. With Gen AI, that changes. And therefore, I think we are going to go and still build on the shoulders of giants, meaning uh, the AI of the past, but with Gen AI, we really bring a uh, deep, deep capability set into uh, the world, which is really focused on reasoning and planning as two core principles uh, that reflect how humans act and humans work, but doing that with computer scale and computer knowledge. Um, and that's really the big uh, change as I see it. Thank, thank you, Uli. I mean, BJ, you have been uh, focusing on uh, generative AI for uh, product innovation and for R&D for several years. I mean, what do you think is different this time? And could you give some example as to why? Yeah, thanks indeed, Jacob. Um, and great to be uh, you know, in this conversation with you, Uli, as well. Uh, so I want to build on what Uli said. For the first time, we are able to reason. And we don't have to wrote, write code for it. So the main difference that I have seen from previous transformation waves is that the work of people who do the research, who do the product innovation, who take customer feedback and put it back into the products very rapidly, that work is changing. So I want to really start with examples. So let's take a, let's take a cosmetics company. And this company today sells products that make people look good. There's a market opportunity and they knew about this opportunity already for products that not only make you look good, but have probable wellness claims. Now that's product innovation if you can do that. What makes it radical product innovation is if you can do that with your existing relatively small base of researchers and product formulators and marketeers and signal gatherers. And you can do that at the speed of consumer trends and not try and become a pharmaceuticals company with 12 year lead times. That is radical. So a product you could not have imagined before generative AI yourself offering at scale. 
Now let's take a second example, a reinsurance company. Now, again, some details have been changed so that we cannot um, sort of reveal exactly who it is. But this company is taking on a huge new portfolio of risks where there is exposure to environmental damage, potentially. Take an example of a dairy operation, sprawling operation. Many things can go wrong. Spill gets into aquifers, into farmland, into even exurban populations. So the ability to ensure a dairy operation is not new. People knew that. What makes it a radical product innovation is if I can do that, I, the insurance company, can do that with my existing underwriters, my existing data assets, and do that in diverse geographical location as new environmental risk factors emerge and new regulations emerge. That is radical. So basically what generative AI allows us to do, I think of it as three things. Number one, it can reason over any information, where there's patterns with tables inside them, sketches inside them, literature, uh, you know, video feeds of increasingly uh, that we are seeing every one of those things and all the emails and teams channels that go around where a lot of knowledge is buried, we can reason. Second is, I think of it as a teaching engine. What my colleagues did in previous experimentations, even though the product was slightly different, can I adapt those learnings into my current work? And lastly, I see it as a process evolution engine. Mm. Just because somebody who did pre-manufacturing did it much later, can they reach back into the early researchers' work to see all the results that were discarded so I don't have to change you know, the equipment that I have? So now those three things come together, and finally we are able to support with technology the radical product innovation cycle. So that's really what I'm seeing. Yeah, yeah that's interesting, Vijay. I mean, when you look at it, it's really amazing when we look at being able to reason over this entire human knowledge that we have in various forms and then uh, being able to go and bring material science and other capabilities into it so that you can really start to say hey how do we find the battery capabilities of the future um, how do we reason over hundreds of thousands of data points um, and make a decision to go and find the, the, the little element that saves 70% on lithium and other capabilities that you're looking at. And so from my perspective, that's just amazing. One of the things that I find you. fascinating, Vijay, before you can go ask here, go ahead. Oh, sorry, I, I interjected. You, you, need to, you need to speak, I can tell. Yeah, no, I wanted to ask you. I, I mean, my thesis, uh, as I were, have, you know, generative AI is just five years old. We've been working in this since 2019. But in the previous waves, the thesis is, CEOs and their leadership teams are really good at taking advantage of new technology to create new products. They've done that before. And really what we are sort of saying is there's a new kind of enabler that's there that already unleashes existing capabilities. Is that how you think about it? Or is it like dreaming completely new products? I personally think it's going to be a um, combination of both. It's, it's, of course, as you said, hey, there is research that we did before. We discarded experiments. Um, as Mr. Edison said, hey, I now know how to not make a life problem. Um, and a lot of companies actually do have the knowledge, but they don't remember anymore because the researchers said that their work might not be there anymore. So now you have access to your history as mm -hmm. much as possible. But now, as you pointed out, the innovation going forward is actually going to be empowered by much faster experimentation in safer and cheaper ways because you can just ask the AI to help you. And the AI is not creative, it is not smart, but it has access to all of this data. And if you ask it, it will iterate with you on ideas and approaches. Um, a very cool example is um, when you have a company that builds toy cars, uh, Hot Wheels or something like that, and you ask the system to create Hot Wheels, you feed it a bit of data. It has no idea what a Hot Wheel is, but because it understands what you believe a Hot Wheel is, it can come up with very creative ideas. And it's much, much faster uh, to do that and partners with the human being, the designer, to effectively go and 
iterate over a design so that at the end of the day, instead of you having a drawn 50, you have been able to do 500, 5,000 scenarios to get just more perspective. And I think that's really the, one of the big things of product innovation, A, access to the past, and B, being able to iterate very quickly with your AI partner um, on new designs. And I think given where we are with respect to human demographics, especially in the Western societies, uh, we need to think through how we keep the level of productivity up or even go higher uh, while we are not having as many human beings anymore that can do the work. So I think that combination is a very powerful uh, set of capabilities. Um, and ultimately, the prize is rapid innovation with fewer human beings, but or the people that are there do do their job faster, better, and more creatively. Absolutely. Uh, Vijay and, and Uli, before I pause this first session, because we're, we're not done, but we're going to pause in a little bit because we need to come back to talk about things like uh, readiness and operationalizing and learnings and so on. We'll do that in, in a different episode. But Vijay, before we do that, I want to close on something you said earlier. Like you said, you gave the example of a reinsurer. So just to bring this back to, and will you talk about the creation of new products and how to be more, uh, let's say, creative in your process and how you can uh, depend and rely on AI as, as, a, as, a, as a creative partner in that process. But Vijay, when you talked about the reinsurance company, you talked about the ability to understand signals, to interpret information, uh, to go deeper than what we, let's say, could do with a traditional way of looking at reinsurance products. Would you say that one thing is the, let's say, the radical product innovation that really speaks to, but there is also an opportunity for companies to reinvent existing products and go further up the stack and to some extent, and I apologize for putting the word in your mouth, but to some extent, let's say, find ways of capitalizing on generative AI even before it's perfect. Absolutely. So uh, let's just continue with the reinsurance example. And again, we're not taking it from a, any specific company. People have data scientists in them, actuaries. They're highly numerate people. Often they have PhDs. And they have already created wonderful models that have stood the test of time. And typically what you find is these models have 60, 80 parameters. So these are the risk factors for any commercial operation. But what generative AI gives you is the ability to add thousands of new parameters. What's happening to the demographic? What's happening to the agricultural parts nearby? What's happening to regulations? You can bring those in and feed them into existing models and make existing models more robust and also more capable of changing as situations change. So every one of the existing products, I mean, I want to stay with radical product transformation, of course, but absolutely you're right. It's not just new products, but existing products really can change with this approach. Fantastic. Interesting. Uh, Uli Vijay, I'm going to have to uh, pause this uh, very, very interesting conversation. Uh, we will come back and, and, and continue along these lines, but I want to thank you uh, for this uh, for this. Uh, for this initial conversation and looking forward to, to picking it up uh, shortly. Thank you. Thanks, awesome. Jacob. Wow, that was great uh, conversation. Uh, in the second part, we're going to talk about readiness and we're going to talk about uh, learnings. So thank you uh, for watching the Azure Essential Show.